First of all, open the Parichay portal and enter your credentials to log in. Once you've successfully logged in, you'll be redirected to the main e-office dashboard. Once logged in, click on e-file from the main menu. By default, when you click on e-file, the system opens the file inbox. To access the receipts section, you will need to click on the hamburger menu button located in the top left corner of the interface. Once the menu expands, carefully select the receipts option from the list. After clicking on the receipts option, a variety of sections will appear, including browse and diaries, electronic, inbox, created, sent, and so on. To create a new receipt, please select the electronic option from this list. Also, there is a shortcut on the top navigation to create a receipt. This shortcut simplifies the process, allowing quick and efficient receipt creation. By using the shortcut, you can streamline your workflow and save valuable time. Access the receipt creation feature directly from the top navigation for ease of use. With this shortcut, managing your receipts has never been easier. To upload a file in the receipts section, click on the upload button located just below the navigation bar. Please ensure that your file is always in PDF format and does not exceed 20 megabytes in size. Additionally, it is important to double check the file before uploading to confirm that it meets these requirements. Keeping file sizes optimized and using the correct format will help prevent errors and facilitate a smoother document management experience within eOffice. Once the file is successfully uploaded, a preview of the uploaded file will be displayed on the left side of the screen. On the right hand side, you will find the associated metadata, which includes important details such as the file upload date and other relevant attributes. This layout allows for easy review and management of your file. The metadata provides crucial information about the document, ensuring that all details are accurately captured and accessible for further processing or reference. Now, if you have uploaded the wrong document, click on the Remove button. Then a pop-up will be displayed. To remove the uploaded document, click Yes. As soon as you click Yes, the document will be removed. First, the diary date refers to the date when the document or file is registered in the system. This date is fixed and cannot be edited. It is critical for tracking the document's timeline within the workflow. Next, Forms of Communication The Forms of Communication refers to the type of communication associated with the document, such as a bill, guideline, circular, notice, etc. These options can be selected from a drop-down menu for easy categorization. Next is Language The Language field identifies the language in which the document is written. You can select the language from a drop-down menu with options such as English, Hindi, and Punjabi. This ensures that the file is processed in the appropriate linguistic context and can be easily identified for translation or processing. Next is Received Date. The received date indicates when the document was received in the department. This timestamp is essential for monitoring deadlines and ensuring timely follow-ups and also this field remains editable. Next is letter date. The letter date is the date mentioned in the document itself. It may differ from the received date and is used for reference purposes in document tracking. Next is letter reference number. The letter reference number is used when the letter is related to another document. It helps inform the user that the response is in reference to that specific letter. The reference number from the related letter is entered here. Next is Delivery Mode. The Delivery Mode field indicates the method through which the document was delivered. Whether it's through courier, email, or any other means, this field helps categorize how the document reached the department. Next, we have the Mode Number, which refers to a specific number or code associated with the Delivery Mode. This can be useful for cross-referencing delivery details and verifying receipt. For example, 
if the document was delivered by post, you can enter the registered number from the postal receipt here. Sender type The sender type categorizes whether the document was sent by an internal department and external entity. This classification helps prioritize document processing and routing. Finally, the VIP field indicates whether the sender is classified as a VIP. This classification helps prioritize the document for expedited processing. Additionally, the field includes a drop-down menu, providing a selection of predefined VIP categories for easy assignment. Next, in the contact details section, you will check add to address book button on the right hand side. This button is designed to help you avoid repeatedly filling in the metadata when you receive multiple letters from the same user. To streamline this, click on the button and select the self option. Additionally, if you select a section, the entry will be visible to all users within that section, allowing them to choose it and autofill the metadata. Similarly, if you select an instance, the entry will be visible across the entire instance, enabling all users within the instance to autofill the metadata using that entry. Additionally, next to the name text box, you will find a contact button. Click on this button and choose the self option to autofill the details. Now, in the ministry, department and others field, use the drop down menu to select the ministry relevant to the letter. For example, if a letter is received from a government, you would select Government of Punjab. This categorization ensures accurate tagging and streamlined processing of correspondence. Now, in the name field, enter the name and designation along with the organization details. Mobile, enter the mobile number of the contact for easy communication. Email, provide the email address for correspondence. This ensures that important communications are sent directly to the contact. Address, fill in the complete address of the contact. This is a required field and must be accurately entered for record keeping purposes. And now select the country, state, city district and pin code from the drop downs and provide contact details such as landline or fax if applicable for accurate geographic and communication information. Category and subject section. First is main category. Select the main category from the drop down menu. This is a mandatory field that helps classify the document accurately. For example, choose the category to which the letter belongs, such as vigilance or IT. If none of the available categories match your letter, you can select general as the default option. Now the subcategory, if applicable, choose the subcategory for more details. Classification. Now the subject field. This field is mandatory. Please input the subject. Type as per the document requirement. Next is the enclosure section. In this section, you can specify the type of enclosure, such as hardware device received. You can also mention the method of dispatch, indicating whether it will be sent by post or courier. Now below you will see a personal acknowledgement button. Selecting this indicates personal acknowledgement will be sent to the sender of the letter confirming the request is being processed and has been completed. It three buttons with the following functionalities. First, generate button. This option generates a receipt and saves it in the receipts created folder. The generated receipt can be sent later if needed. Second, generate and send button. And this button generates the receipt and redirects to receipt send screen. Third, generate and copy button. This option generates the receipt and copies the metadata. It then provides an option to upload another receipt. But in this video, we will click on the generate and send button. Now we are on send window. Navigate to the send window where you can fill in the sender details. In the to field, enter the name of the recipient to whom you want to send the receipt. Next, if you wish to send an alert to the recipient, select the relevant option. You can choose to send the alert via SMS or email by clicking the respective option. Next, in the CC field, you can send the receipt to multiple persons. However, 
in the to field only one recipient can be added now in the remarks section you can add any comments or notes related to the receipt now in below you can set the due date for the letter additionally you can specify actions select priority and initiate the required action if a dsc digital signature certificate is installed in your system you can add it otherwise click on the send If you want to check whether your receipt has been sent or not, you can click on the sent button in the left menu bar on the home page to verify. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more updates and tutorials.